we call on the leaders of the United Nations, the entire free and democratic world, and human rights organizations worldwide to, uni to unite in order to stop the continuous Syria was known as a symbol of civilization where humankind created the first alphabet in the world, the first musical note, and many other essential things for the human being. After these terrible bloody times, new generation of Syrians would just like to live in peace and be a part of a respectful international community of human rights and democracy. Once peace is achieved, Syrians want to regain their regional and global role as a civilized country with human and civil rights. With the help of national leaders, this world, this world would be a more secure and better place to live in. We in the Syrian community in Finland, we came to this result Aha, no that Finland pitta, like is a great ano. example, uh, an ideal example for the Syrians to, to, to know more about this precious experience, how to build real, stable peace and real justice. I am sure that many recognized Finnish experts and peacemakers would be ready to have an effective and active role in building peace in Syria for the sake of the countless Syrians who are scattered in many countries with an indefinite future when there is a real will to save the rest of the Syrian souls. We are free. We are free. Repeat after me. We are free. We are free. We are free. Thank you. Kiitoksia, Mania Alkhati. Thank you. The next speaker founded a global department at the Human Rights Campaign, the largest, the largest LGBTQ civil rights organization in the United States. Anarkisti vei Pano Hatu ja kävi he väkivaltaisesti päälle. Seuraava puhuja perusti maailmanlaajuisen osaston Human Rights Kävi fyysisesti ihmisen päälle. Suurin LGBTQ kansalaisoikeusjärjestö Yhdysvalloissa. Hän johtaa projekteja, jotka tukevat uranurtavaa työtä LGBTQ vähän ihmisoikeuksien edistämiseksi. Welcome, welcome, Hello, Helsinki. Hello. My name is Ty Cobb, and I'm here to speak on the behalf of the Human Rights Campaign the largest lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer civil rights organization in the United States. It's my honor to be here with you today before Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin bring their shameful and appalling records on human rights to this beautiful city. I want to thank SETA for their tremendous partnership in working with us today, and as well as their leadership on LGBTI rights here in Finland. At HRC, we have had a front row seat to the terrible harm that Donald Trump has had on LGBTQ people, people of color, women, Muslims, immigrants, and so many others. His Department of Education has rolled back guidance to protect gay and transgender students, giving a green light to bullies and others who want to harm LGBTQ children. Shame. 
He's trying to stack our Supreme Court with justices who want to give businesses the right to discriminate against LGBTQ people. Shame. It was almost one year ago that he tweeted he wants to exclude patriotic transgender Americans from service. Shame. And he has slammed the door on countless immigrants and refugees, including those who are LGBT, who desperately need our help while tearing apart families at our borders. Shame. Shame. Meanwhile, he has turned a blind eye to some of the worst anti-LGBTQ atrocities that have happened anywhere around the world in a generation. In Chechnya, more than a hundred men have been arrested, rounded up, tortured, and some killed just for being suspected of being gay or bisexual. Trump has said nothing. In Egypt, where dozens were imprisoned because someone had the audacity to raise a rainbow flag at a concert. Trump has said nothing. In Indonesia, where two men were publicly flogged in front of a jeering crowd, Trump has said nothing. We need a leader in the United States and we need leaders around the world who will stand up for human rights. But it, when it comes to extremists and dictators, Trump has plenty to say. When white supremacists rallied in Virginia, and one of them, were, and when a protester was killed, he said there were good people on both sides. Shame. When he met with the brutal North Korean dictator, he called him very honorable. Shame. And he went, meets, when he meets with Putin tomorrow, will he once again call him a great leader? Sadly, we know the answer all too well. <laughs>